Everyone remembers buckets. She does not look happy. Footwear got jealous. So she gets to show up too. No animals are harmed in the filming of any Artemis videos. Hello everyone and welcome to Vita Day 15. After today we'll be halfway through it. My name of course is Artemis, and I'm going to touch on a topic that has been discussed extensively by people better for this than I in an industry standpoint, particularly Jim Sterling has done a couple things on it. Here you'll find his video on the topic and down in the description you'll find a link to a recent article he did. This is more just me giving my own self-expression on the matter, not so much an industry analysis, just kind of me venting. Recently, within the past few days, Nintendo has decided to stop production of the NES Mini. Now, I remember all the big interest when this product was announced. I was pretty on the bench about it. It, it didn't overly appeal to me, so because a lot of the titles weren't ones I grew up with, weren't ones I was too interested in, aside from a few that I've already gotten other things. However, Nintendo has really been terrible at releasing its older content. Now, Nintendo isn't the only one. They are just really the most prominent. I remember when it used to be on the initial Wii Virtual Console, you would get three game releases a week. I don't understand why it's such a slow trickle. I, I could see possibly a marketing standpoint saying we want to keep interest going we don't just want to saturate it and have you buy something and not get around to it and thus not buy another thing that part makes sense to me but just really they haven't kept up with it not to a degree i'm happy with anyway if you look at some other platforms be they steam xbox live playstation network they have much more extensive back catalogs than Nintendo does. Understand a good portion of this is certain licensing agreements where certain developers are operating with now. But a lot of the stuff that fans want to see, at least as far as I can imagine, Nintendo developed first party. Now obviously there are things out there like the Banjo-Kazooie games or Conquer games or even DK64 which I think may have gotten a virtual console release anyway, I can't recall. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I'll probably do it myself in a notation here. There you go. Those are now difficult to deal with because Rare is developing with Microsoft. But then we also look over at Sony, who's currently got a lot with Square, though Square's kind of gone all overboard at this point. And we see on the Sony network, there's a lot of Final Fantasy games, there's the Vagrant Story games. I'm still not finding Brave Friends or Musashi. I, I don't understand that one. I don't know if it was a popularity decision or what, but a lot of companies are still lacking titles. But now we have Nintendo just full on stopping production of the NES Mini, and we're not seeing the titles we want get onto the virtual console platforms. And it's a pain in the butt. Now, I'm currently still buying a lot of older games. A lot of cases through secondhand means with buy and sell groups on Facebook, Kijiji ads, things like that. And I know a lot of people are also buying these as collectors. I buy because I want to play. Now, because a lot of these games go unproduced, that's where a lot of collector value does get driven up. It makes it hard for some of us out there who do just want to experience these titles to get the chance to. Because next thing you know, that game that only had a production run of 100 copies for whatever arbitrary reason and is pretty horrible, is $1,400 for just the basic game, be it the cart or the disc or whatever format it came in. And this is really frustrating. I mean, old content should not be so difficult to release logistically. Like if you have it and you have the rights to it, there's no reason just to say, hey, guess what? BAM! There you go. There is your game. Have fun if you want. If not, we, we're kind of storing it anyway, so we may as well throw it up there, pay, get a little bit of the bandwidth cost back, and make a small profit off of it. I can't fathom any particular reason 
against such a practice. I can't fathom a company not wanting its older titles to be experienced and still loved by those who are nostalgic for them and those who might be looking to go through video games history. I can't fathom a company that wants to say we have no intentions to do anything with something we hold the rights to for no clear reason. What are some of the games that you miss out there that you wish companies would release in its current form? What are some of the uh, games out there that you might want to see remakes of? So I think that covers about everything I want to say today. Again, check out the works of Jim Sterling here in the description to see more about this as he's a little better rested in the industry than I am and can give you not so much a reason look, but a deeper analysis on the topic. I'll talk to everyone tomorrow.